Hey guys, welcome to lesson number seven. In this lesson, we are building the login system. And I know I said we couldn't get into it too much, but I will do the best I can to at least describe the file structure and talk about a little bit how the files work together to make the login system work, as well as we'll be doing a tiny bit of jQuery and showing you how you can use it to um, tell users, you know, give users information depending on what they put in. So, Let's go ahead and just get started talking a little bit about what's going on here in the login system. You'll notice uh, the first thing that's different is uh, now there's this new login folder within the session files. So you'll need to download the latest source code to have this in here. And um, you might not have these files down here yet, but within this login, we have a classes folder, a new CSS folder, more images, some includes, which we don't actually even use, but um, some includes and um, uh, some JavaScript along with a login.php and an index.php. So you'll need at least these two in there. Um, basically how this works, um, well, actually the first thing I'm going to show you is the login button. On the last session, it, yours is probably, if you're using going off the last times, um, it's probably pointing somewhere else, probably like CMS or something. I don't know. Not exactly sure where it might be pointing, but you need to make sure it's pointing to login slash login.php. Um, I did build this site one time um, as kind of like a rough draft, and so sometimes I didn't get all my links changed. So we want to make sure that you change your link buttons appropriately. And on the login page itself, you want to make sure this login button is pointing back to the root PHP. So I have the full login link there. You can do just the uh, the relative uh, value if you want to. It doesn't matter. So you want to make sure those are uh, pointing appropriately. And now you'll notice at the top, the first thing here is we have some PHP code and we are starting a session which will create a cookie um, so information can be remembered in the user's browser. And um, now we're requiring the class.membership.php and what goes on in there is a bulk of the work. Um, first thing it does is require the mysql.php which is right here. And it is a private connection, um, which means uh, you won't be able to access it outside of uh, this. And it's a, a connection to our server, basically. It's a connection to the server, and it says to select from the users table. Um, and that's really all it does. So make sure you have localhost, root, root, and then your database there, if it's named different than ssvlog. Um, back to... Membership. Um, what membership does is I tried to comment these out so they make a little bit more sense, but um, it uh, validates the user. Um, it's going to set their status and send them to the admin.index page. Here it sets the status to authorized, and then the header sends it to a new location of index.php. Um, if their status is not authorized, it's going to do a please enter a correct username and password. So basically what that's going to do is if they enter the wrong information, um, it's going to give them this warning right here. Um, this function removes the user status for a proper logout, so this takes their status and it unsets it. Um, and this actually destroys the cookie, so that if they try to go back to index.php within the login folder, it's going to kick them right back out. Um, and this right here is what's going to do that. This says, uh, this starts a new session, and if status is not authorized, then go back to login.php. So basically that's how the membership works. And uh, within this page, um, oh, and then here we're calling the memberships and we're confirming that they're a member to make sure that they have access to the index.php. Now back within the source code, um, nothing too crazy going on here. Uh, I call the HTML5 docu type. Um, we talked a little bit about the uh, character settings and um, calling a style sheet. And I have a different style sheet here than the deep, the style sheet we're using. It's a whole separate one. Um, you can tell I have it organized much the same. And the reason I do that is uh, I tend to write a lot of stylings and my code kind of gets long and it can take up a lot of space and take longer to load. So sometimes I separate my actual site from my administrative side. So I don't know, necessarily know if that's best practice, but that's kind of how I do it. Um, I've kind of learned to each his own. If it's something you like to do, then go for it. And if it's not, um, then don't use it that way. But make sure whatever you do, you try to stay consistent so that if someone else does have to work with your code, they can kind of um, follow your pattern and see what's going on. 
Um, let me go back. Um, the other piece of PHP in, oh, that's the wrong one. The other piece of PHP within the login.php, so the login page, is this. Um, if uh, if uh, is set response, so if response is turned on, um, which would be if they typed in something wrong, echo out an alert and do the response, which is that. Please enter a correct username and password. So please type in a username and password. That goes within an H4 tag with a class of alert. And uh, so basically that doesn't exist by default, but it's created by PHP when they uh, type something out wrong. And uh, it's really only shown through JavaScript. And so I'm going to go ahead and highlight this. And kind of how this works is there's a function here that we talked about last time. It's a document.ready function that makes sure the entire document loads before any of this is processed. And uh, this dollar sign is basically an alias for jQuery. Um, we've called the jQuery library right here, and so now we could use it just like we want. And um, basically, so this alias, which replaces jQuery, just says jQuery, select the H4 with the class of alert, which isn't doesn't exist yet, but um, it'll find it and it will select it and then it'll initially hide it and it'll fade it in slow once it does appear on the page. Uh, and then we say jQuery select span class a span tag with a class of exit and put an X inside of that and append it to the H4. So this says as soon as the H4 is existing, um, go ahead and create this tag right here and add it to the H4 with a class of alert. And this is jQuery select that span you just created and on click, take this parent, which is this element's parent, this H4 tag, and um, basically fade it out slow. So when you click that X, the whole thing fades out nice and slow. Um, when the parent fades out, it will take this span exit with it because it is inside. So that's kind of how the JavaScript works and we'll be doing more on that as we go. And so now what we need to do is add our information and make sure that this login system works. So go ahead and uh, let's go to Chrome. Let's open up our map, open a start page. Go to PHP My Admin, find the appropriate database, find the appropriate table, which is users. And um, I'm hoping this is showing up. Uh, I'm not sure my mouse is showing up on all this. I should have been probably clicking beside each one as I did it. I've had issues with that in the past, but hopefully it works okay for you. Um, so users, and then let's add a user. Insert. And since this is auto-incrementing right here, we don't need to type anything there. Now it's just a username, and then password is what I'm going to type for our password. Obviously your username can be whatever you want, and your password can be whatever you want, but we used MD5 encryption, and you can see that in the membership section, MD5 password. So it's going to encrypt it. So just typed in MD5, and there's a bunch of these on the internet, so it doesn't really matter where you go. You just type password. MD5 it and copy that code, that string, and paste the string in. And that's it. Click go. And that's been created now for us. So now all that's left to do is go to the site title, click login, and that appears to be working okay. Let's type it in wrong first and see what it says. And that appears to be working appropriately. It clears the fields for us. Please enter a correct username and password. And then here is our spam with a class of exit. And when we click it, it all fades out. Pretty awesome. And then uh, let's type in the right one, username, password. And if this works, we'll get to the index page. And we're here. Welcome to the semi-complete admin page. So we've made it. And um, I'll show you what happens now. Since we had a cookie created, we can actually go back to um, the blog. Here we are. And then we can go back to the login index page and we get in just fine. But once you click this logout button, now if we want to go to the index of the login, it won't let us. Um, so basically it's important, that's, a, that's basically how a login system works. Um, so to get back in, you got to type in your information again. And we're in. So uh, basically that's all I wanted to show you for this lesson. Next lesson we'll be completing the admin page. As you can tell there are some things here, but they need work. So uh, I will catch you guys in lesson number eight.